from the Key Radio Studios in Provo, Utah, and broadcasting live throughout Utah County, Sevier County, South Central Utah, Carbon County, and the Uinta Basin. It's your good friends, Mike and Heather, in the morning. Woohoo! Wednesday is the day when Pastor Chad comes in. That's right. Pastor always, Chad Johnson. We always like that day. Fellowship Bible Church in Linden, Utah. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. How are you guys? <laughs> We're doing great. Yeah? Having a good yes. week? Oh, I think so. Yes, yes, yes. I woke up this morning with a crazy little song in my head. It's the belly button song from the Veggie Tales. Who wakes up singing, I need to tell you something. I don't got a belly button. I mean, it's seriously. And it's not even good grammar. That's the thing that really irks me. <laughs> Does any of the Veggie Tales have good grammar? Uh, I don't know. I so you woke up singing this song? And it was in my head. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. out loud. Well, no, Probably no, I mean, well, I mean, it, it became out loud yeah. for the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> then, of course, they have to go and listen to it. So that, that, I don't know. Sometimes I just wake up and I have songs in my head. I don't know where they come from. I don't know what I was dreaming, what I ate before I went to bed, but there it is. The belly button song. The belly button song. <laughs> All right. We have Grant at the controls and he's making sure that we are on Facebook live and then he, that we're actually Okay. Also live I'll, I'll on there. Oh, quick. okay. <laughs> Great. Thanks. A lot. Yes. <laughs> yes. We are on Facebook Live. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So if you're listening, you could also have the misfortune of watching us as well. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook Live. Okay. Mike, I think you're pretty. <laughs> pretty what? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Yeah. All right, you guys. It's going to be like that. That's I am okay. not pretty. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you're pretty okay. We didn't yeah. say it, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I understand. I still think you're small. Okay, let's take a look at the news. Funny little story. It could have been, it ter- could have turned out bad, but it didn't. There was this man who decided that he wanted to go skydiving in Vermont. That sounds fun, right? Goes to skydiving adventures in Addison, Vermont. And he was having a great time. He is in the air. He is plummeting down to the earth at a bazillion miles an hour. And he gets down and he realizes something. He lost his leg. He had a prosthetic <laughs> leg <laughs> somewhere between the airplane and the ground. He lost his oh, leg. Man. But good news. He, there was a farmer out in the fields, and all of a sudden he kind of looks down. He goes, hey, there's a leg <laughs> in the field. <laughs> and uh, he found the guy's leg, and he gave it back to the man. All is well that ends well. Isn't that the craziest little thing? Never did hear. That doesn't happen every day. Yeah, mm-hmm. the guy's like, you know, the guy falling from the sky. He's like, he just had so much adrenaline rushing. <laughs> he's like, he didn't even notice until. I bet there's a lot of crazy stories with legs like that, uh-huh. prosthetic legs. I bet, I bet if I had one, I would make some crazy stories. <laughs> oh, you would. <laughs> yeah. a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> We'd man. have fun with that. Huh? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it was a funny little story. I loved it. And I loved how the, can you imagine what the farmer was thinking? He was like minding his own business, you know, looking at the beans or corn or whatever he was doing. And I'll, wait a minute. <laughs> That's Some, different. So it yeah. landed. Oh, he found it. It didn't like land next to him. No. Like, at terminal velocity. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would have made a good story. Yeah. No. Nope. Just a couple days later, scratches his head, says, "Huh." I Jammed hope. up in his combine. That, no. No. Actually, <laughs> oh. no. That's what's so crazy. It. It wasn't even run. It could have. He had. He had a, a, a combine, and it, it could have destroyed it. But um, nope. Not at all. Mm. Good stuff. Happy good, ending. G- happy ending. Wow crazy stuff and then um let's see what else can i tell you i can tell you that <laughs> today is silicon oh we could do that but i just <laughs> want to let you know that silicon valley a tesla engineer has decided to change the way chocolate chips are made because because <laughs> they look the, like the tesla the, the don't tesla they? pickup truck yeah. that's right it's kind of the same shape it's but, my favorite design yeah the guy says but he's thinking you know <laughs> we should make everything look like this <laughs> <laughs> it's optimized for melting and for tasting so because he says you know when you take a regular chocolate chip and you put it in your mouth all of a sudden you're just overwhelmed <laughs> chocolate everywhere ah and he says you need to ease into the taste and so he's created this this chocolate chip that's thicker in the middle and then thin on both sides that melts at a certain, I don't know, velocity. What is it? I don't know. It just melts. And then yeah, it, it just kind of eases you into it. He, he calls it uh, chocolate chip 2.0. Yeah, that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, Heather, I sent you an email. I will try it. 
I would try it. Well, yeah, anything chocolate you would try. Well, yeah, <laughs> maybe he's right. You don't know. Don't be closed-minded. This is technology, man. <laughs> I sent you an email last week, Heather. You did. <laughs> <laughs> that this Wednesday was going to be National Chicken Wing Day. It is National Chicken and Wing And we could have had a chicken wing eating competition mm. here, that right here on Key great. Radio. At 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. 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 Uh, that yeah, would have been good. Wow. Been amazing. Did I accidentally erase that email? Shame <laughs> on me. <laughs> Come on. Wow. It's also um, <laughs> National Lasagna Day. Food. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's also National Cheese Sacrifice Purchase Day. Do you know what I that's about? No I had to look this one up. Uh, it's when you go and you get cheese and you love the cheese, but you also have a problem with a mouse in your house. So what you do is you take the cheese that you bought from the store and you cut yourself a piece and then you cut, just kind of, you know, break off a little piece for the mouse trap. Put it in the mouse trap. Mouse gets a piece of cheese. You get a piece of cheese. That's what it's about. That's mm. the day. That's the day. We have a Who day for makes that. this stuff up? I don't know. Ah, that's, man. That's a not like a that great should day. be like not a great day at all. And I and like actually, chicken wings better than that. Yeah, peanut for butter. Sure. Peanut butter works better, I think. Oh, for, for the sure. mouse trap. For the mouse trap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, anyway. that, better than chicken wings. Peanut oh. butter on chicken wings. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> now I'm. You confused. sacrifice some cheese to the peanut butter. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm so confused. Let's, <laughs> let's let's go on. Okay, anything else? Anything else we need to talk about? No. Oh, I do have something. Um, let's see here. Rocky Railroad Summer Day Camp over at Shooter's Soccer Field House, Benjamin, Utah, hosted by Utah Valley Church. This is taking place August 4th through the 7th for 4th through 6th grade. That's a Tuesday through Friday. It says, parents, send your kids on a mountaintop adventure at Rocky Railway Day Camp. Kids, Ages 4th through 6th grade, discover Jesus' power can pull them through life's ups and downs. You can register them today. Well, I think you just go to Utah Valley Church. Uh, teen camp is Tuesday through Thursday of the same week, and that's at 6 o'clock p.m. The day camp is at 9.30 a.m. And teens, uh, you'll have music, games, scripture study, all sorts of fun things. Um, they'll have dinner at 6 p.m., and the event starts at 6.30. Dinner. Ooh, that sounds so wonderful. Mm. I like food. Okay. A any more information, you could go to Utah Valley Church events on Facebook. Um, that's what I needed to tell you. And there's that's the good. job fair yeah. today. Job fair today online uh, from 10 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. And that is jobs.utah.gov. Okay. Now, that's done. Yep. Pastor today. Chad. Yes. Who, hey. who buried Moses? This is our trivia question for today. Who, who buried, buried Moses? Buried Moses. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay, mm -hmm. do, are you, do you want us all to answer? Is <laughs> yep. this just for Chad? No, no, everybody. Okay, because I'm Facebook. like, if, if we get in. our Send own. It. Okay, all right. So Bring it. If you, <laughs> if you know the answer to this one, definitely give us a text, 855-539-4583. You, you can also just throw it in the comment section on Facebook Live. Um, 855-539-4583. Who buried Moses? Christine, if you're listening. I bet you know the answer to this one. And we are going to quickly introduce our topic of discussion today, which I have entitled, Every Rose Has Its Thorn. Ooh, what sorry. Christians Cannot Do? Christians Christians cannot be mean to their pastors, okay, and their leadership in their churches. It's not okay. Some situations um, call for, you know, maybe confrontation, which we're going to talk about. But, but you know what? We are not meant to be the devil's advocate. Like, no, not in church. We don't do that. Some people feel it's their duty to keep <laughs> leadership and, and humble. And spiritual gift. Spiritual yeah. gift of, of, <laughs> of criticism. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not cool. We're going to explore this a little bit more. And I love it that we're going to talk to a pastor about what bothers pastors. <laughs> this is a great topic. Yeah, aren't you happy we called you for this I one? Love it so yeah, much. this is going to be great. So get out your phones, get ready, get ready for some great conversation. Be a part of the conversation. This is a discussion, my dear friend. So if you've got questions or comments, we would love to hear from you. You are listening to Mike and Heather in the morning on Key Radio. Grant at the controls playing our wonderful exit music for now. We have Pastor Chad Johnson of Fellowship Bible Church in Linden. Go get yourself a cup of coffee. Get out your Bible. Of course, we're going to be digging into God's Word as we have our discussion today. Key Radio Life Unlocked, Truth Unleashed. We have Pastor Chad Johnson of Fellowship Bible Church in Linden with us, and we're talking about respecting the leadership or, or loving the leadership, not being 
Nature, those people. Yeah, not yeah. being those people. <laughs> difficult to the leadership That's right. of the church. So we should back up, though, and just talk a little bit about what is the church yeah. and what has God prescribed for a leadership of the church. Yeah, good good question. Are you turning it over to me? I'm, yeah. Did I jump oh, in? Oh, I could go so? ahead. I'll tell yeah. you. No. I mean, I, I, just, I could talk, too. No, I just want to make sure. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not the ultimate authority here. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I'll talk then if you just. <laughs> well, well, we're talking about people who have been saved become the church, right? And the church isn't a building. The, they can have a church building, but mm-hmm. the church isn't the building. It's the people who yeah. have been saved. When we talk about the church universal. We're talking about people from Acts chapter two till the return of Christ, mm-hmm. who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, who have put their trust in him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So then, I mean, the word church, I mean, the called out ones, that we've, we're not, we're, we're, we're people, we're people that belong to, to Jesus Christ, we're people whose faith is in Jesus Christ. So we've been called out of something. We've been called out of darkness and into light, all the, out of lies and into truth, out of uh, just all uh, deadness, and now we're alive. I mean, there'd be all kinds of different uh, we were this, but now we're this. So we've been called out of the world. Now we're in relationship with God. And the the Bible, when it talks about the church, it, it doesn't call it a business. It doesn't call it an organization. The The Bible calls the church a body, a family. You know, the, the language that it, that it uses is very, it's very relational, which shows uh, just the importance that relationships are within the body of Christ, that it's, it's not just an event, it's a family. It's something that you are a part of. It's, it's, a, it's a group of, group of people that you belong to. See, because Jesus didn't just, just die to, so that you could have a relationship with him. He also wants to bring, out, bring about uh, a deep reconciliation between, uh, between God's people, mm-hmm. that they would be unified, that they'd be reconciled, that they'd be together, that they would belong together, that that love would really ultimately be the thing that marks uh, the people of God. And so it, we have to have that, that relationship focus uh, when it comes to the church. And what, what a great way to start the conversation, to, to, to talk about just that foundation of what the church is and who we are and how we're, how we're to operate. I think, that's, I think that's really healthy. Mm-hmm. Where do you want to go next, Mike? Well, we should go and talk about maybe just leadership of the church. What, mm-hmm. What's God's designed for leading over a church because right. you know we get a group of people together and even if we're all like-minded in let's say we all are desiring to be more like Christ and we all want to share the gospel message to people and and take that message around uh, he still has designed a church with some leadership over it yeah that there's there's structure i mean the, the heart of god is that there be order cuz the fact is is that if he just left it to the people and just love one another and you guys can figure it out and everything's going to be fine. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm above it all, but you know, just do whatever you want. And there, there has to be order. There has to be structure. And so we're, we're, we're not to operate like a business and we are to operate like a family, but even within a family, like as a dad, like there's structure in my home. If mm-hmm. there's not structure and my kids have as much authority as I have, like that's chaos. Like there, there's, there's order, there's structure. So even in the church, God, God says, okay, here's the structure I want you to have. Here's the order I want you to have. Here's the leadership that I, that I want you to have. Here's how I want you to do that. Here's how, and, and together we're to, to operate in, in those sort of ways. But what the gift that God has given to the church is pastors, elders, um, overseers, you know, that those words, pastor, elder, overseer, they are used uh, interchangeably. Uh, in 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 the Bible, you see them in in different spots, but um, just for the the sake of brevity and time, it's it's you boil it down. It's the spiritual leadership of the church that that God would give as a blessing, as a gift to to the church. That those those pastor elders that they they would see um, really the importance of the truth of the Word of God. That they would hold in high authority the the Word of God, and that as they would. Uh, lead the church and guide the church and, and help the church uh, with decisions and here's where we're moving here's where we're going that it would be that it would be a biblical church uh, ab- above everything else you, you want your church to be centered and anchored in in the word of god uh, and that's you know 
to guide the church in the theological truth is one of the things that you see over and over again as a call for, for the pastors and the elders and those that would be in spiritual leadership uh, of a church. Now, the, even within churches, there could be some nuances uh, for uh, for the leadership, for the structure, even within within elders, that there would be some who would say, well, the pastor has authority over these elders and then the elders over the church, where I, I see it biblically uh, for the health of a pastor that it's not to be a one-man show. It's not mm-hmm. to be a, here's the pastor, he has the authority. And I would even go so far to say, I think I see so often in today's churches, and and I, and I say this not not to say I'm, I'm I'm better than others or I have a right perspective. It's just an observation that I've made to help myself stay healthy. I speak these things as a pastor, mm-hmm. and I do so humbly, uh, just understanding that it, it's not it's not my game, it's not my show, it's not my it's not even my my vision. See, and, and this is what what I see so often is is a pastor will will think I have the authority, I'm going to have my vision. Here's where we're going, and then the people also have this mindset of what's what's your thing what's your vision and then the the pastor then will have his vision and say this is what we're doing we're going and then if anybody bucks that or says uh, questions that or anything it just becomes how dare you how, mm-hmm. how dare you there's mm-hmm. there has to be a culture of humility and and not a one man show mm-hmm. and, and and so a pastor and elders are together uh, to make decisions and guide and lead uh, to lead a church into theological truth that the vision would be. We want to be as biblical as we possibly can be. And, and so it's steering clear of this businessy mindset because in business, you have the CEO, you have the the guy, mm-hmm. and, and he's doing it. And then uh, stemming from that, then what you start to have is a, an, an employee... Uh, employer type of type of thing, a, a consumer mindset that can creep into the church where it's the guy and then the show oh, and, and there's the music. Nothing, and nothing then, more destructive than that, isn't it? No, because I mean, when you have come in, you have the hired gun and then you have the rest of the people. Yeah, that is not right. It's not good for the leader. It's not good for the people. Right, and that and that's why God is so clear in in wanting that a, a body, a family, an accountability, a a process, uh, an order, and, and not a, a flying solo uh, ser- sort of guy saying, this is it, everyone follow this, even if you have to do it blindly, if you don't like it, you, out you go, I could care less. And it, it is, it, but it all comes from what we started talking about, and that was love. Love mm-hmm. the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength mm-hmm. and and love your neighbor as yourself and out of that that love then we'd be able to function in healthy sort of ways from from leaders to the people that the people would be able to to love their their leaders to uh, to, to respect their leaders to pray for their leaders and and you know, and we'll talk more probably later about what would be the the helpful way to if you have questions or doubts or want clarity or a quote unquote criticism, mm-hmm. you know, what, what can you do with those? And, and I would say there has to be a, a culture where that is invited, where that is, we, we want that. We want to stay sharp. We want to stay in communication with our people. We want to operate as a family that there's communication there. You, you have to have all that. If it just becomes, well, this is just who I am and what I've said and what we're doing. And if you don't like it, you like, we have to be so careful of, of all of that. I'm going round and round with these things. I'll no, it's over. good. Yeah, the the good. picture, I think, is is like a shepherd or under-shepherd, right? Mm-hmm. Like you are responsible to Jesus mm-hmm. for what you do, and you should be humble in that. Yeah. And But shepherding in a loving way, caring for the flock and protecting the flock, because if there is no leadership, there are going to be people, there's going to be wolves that come in and pull people away. Mm-hmm. And so that that is the job of the elder and that's a, it's right. really important. Yeah, not to act like an an, an owner uh, where the the members, the people just become customers. I mean it's <laughs> just there's so many dangers that that happen with with that. But um, we have to think of where Jesus fits in all of it. And and what Jesus has said is that he's the chief shepherd. Mm-hmm. And the pastors and elders have to acknowledge that Ultimately, they, they don't have the, the authority. They are under Jesus. They will be judged by Jesus. Like there, there is this, this humbleness that, that comes from, we don't just have 
employees and customers. We have family members. <laughs> we, the, we, we don't, business has, businesses have bosses. The church has a Lord. Mm -hmm. His name's Jesus. Yeah. It's not Pastor Chad. It's not Pastor whatever. Uh, our Lord is, is Jesus. The authority of the written word of God and the victory of the living word of God is something that I'm fond of saying that anyone that would go to my church, hopefully they've heard me say that over and over again, that the authority it belongs to the word of God and to Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church. And then we all operate under him. And there's different levels. There's leaders in within that, but it's all under the umbrella and framework of the word of God and King Jesus ruling as, as the head of the church. And I think when you have that mindset and you operate and you just have a heart to be humble in that and to, to lead the people and have a culture where there's, there's give and take and learning, well, learning from each other and we're all in this together and I'm not better than anyone. And, you know, maybe my quote unquote vision could even be, uh, you know, it's, it's the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and we want the word of God. We want more of the word of God. The nature of the church is up to Jesus, not the pastor, not the elders. The nature of a church is up to God himself and what he said already uh, within the word of God. And we're just to, to operate and do the best that we possibly can to be a biblical church. Mm -hmm. And at the ideal church, wouldn't you picture like uh, everybody <laughs> equally qualified to, you know, right across the board, every person in the church yeah. qualified, but a few called to be elders yeah. that actually are, you know, mm -hmm. leading right. the church. Right. And, and there's, 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 the Bible even gives clarity for here's the qualifications for an elder mm -hmm. and they will have specific gifting that God has given to them. That that's not for, for everyone that, that God has said, it will be this, it will be this, look for these men, look for. And, and so the whole, the whole process is, is, but it's all coming from what God has said in his word. Yeah. And you just want to keep yourself anchored in that. I liked how you pointed out very clearly about love and often uh, we think, okay, yeah, I'm love too. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I'm a pastor and I have to love people. Uh, but th there's um, this huge pas passage in 1 Corinthians 13 that actually we take out of context when we bring it into a wedding, uh, generally speaking, right? It's the love passage. Love is patience, love mm -hmm. is kind. But if you actually read it, it's starting from like 12, you start realizing that this is a letter to a church in Corinth. And it's so important because it's, 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 here it is. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love. I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Now, this is the Apostle Paul talking here, right? Okay, mm -hmm. this is the guy, right? He says, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain Nothing. Love is what is motivating and driving a church body, right? Just as in a family. And then it goes on to say, love is authoritative. Love is, no, it doesn't say this. It says love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It does not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is, and, and it's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. The point what I'm trying to make here is that that love doesn't just fall on a pastor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that it doesn't fall just on the eldership and the leadership or whatever you want to call the ship today. It falls on all of us. Because we are all a family. When you are a member, if you're a member of a local church and you, of course, are in, uh, you are a member of the, the church universal, right? We are the called out ones. And the way that the world can see us being called out is by our love yeah. for one another. Yeah. And so that right away, before we start getting like, oh, you know, pastors have to do, we all have to look in the mirror and say, mm, me too. Yeah. Me too. And that's what's going to drive our church body. Yeah. Yeah, and that all is coming from the good shepherd. Yeah, the the good shepherd is the one that has exemplified those things to a T. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that has done it perfectly in ways that none of us ever have. And so we're we're all just following the good shepherd. Now, as a shepherd, uh, and or me as a pastor or elders or spiritual leadership, like it has to be people. Mm -hmm. it, it has to be a love and a care and a concern and a prayer and a 
with people and caring for people and here's their needs and how can I meet them? It's not just CEO and behind a desk and creating graphs and charts <laughs> and administration. It's, you know, and some are more gifted in those ways and that's, that's fine. But uh, if, if you're not a shepherd, then you're not a pastor. Right. And, and some pastors need to hear that. Mm -hmm. that that's, that, that's something that, you know, I'm not perfect in, but that is a call of God on, on pastors, on elders. You love people. You care. If you don't, if you don't have that, then don't call yourself a pastor. <laughs> like there has to be a level of, of, of love. You're the good job. Now out of that, you know, we set the pace with that. The leaders would go first and say, this is what it means to love people. This is what it means to care for people. Here's how we love people here. You want, you know, cause it, it could be people out there kind of thinking, well, that's, that's nice, nice pastor. Uh, what can I do? You know, how, how can I play my part at my church? What, what would, what would pastors and leaders and elders and others like from just someone like me? What do you, and, and, and I've got a list because that's what pastors do. Are you ready for this? Oh, please tell me there's alliteration to <laughs> There's yeah. not. There's <laughs> three not. bullet points in a poem. I may, I may not even cover all these things, but I, we want, we want there to be from the ground up a culture of love and, and familiness and togetherness. And, and, and so a loving church, that's what God wants because he's the good shepherd and he has laid down his life for the sheep and he has loved us. And so much of the Bible is just that language of relationship and, and togetherness and fellowship, a loving church. And this is where people can play their part. A, a loving church practices learning. A loving church loves the word of God. We want you to love the word of God. If you are engaging in the word of God and you're committed to being there and, and, and just in, in ways that you can or times that you can, but there, we want you to have a love for the word of God. And if we see you really learning and engaging and asking questions and really visibly like just um, you're, you're, you're there and you're just, we want you to love the word of God. Cause that's, that's the foundation of everything out of love for God and his word. There's both the biblically faithful teaching that people should expect from their leaders. Mm -hmm. People should expect that from the pastor. Please, please teach us the Bible, teach us to, uh, to us faithfully and consistently and, and clearly and passionately and persistently and, and just keep, keep doing that. And as you do that pastor and leaders, and you're, you're so committed to leading us into the truth. Uh, here, I, I'm, I'm engaging. I love the word of God. I love, there's that, that, that give and take, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but a loving church practices that level of, of learning. A loving church then just doesn't hear the word. They're doers of the word. A loving church would practice obedience. And if you have leaders looking out at their flock and they have a love for God and a love for people and a love for obeying the word that they hear, and, and, and they're quick to confession, quick to repentance. They're quick to make things right with other people. And they're responding to the word of God as they've heard the word of God. Like that blesses the hearts of leaders and pastors. It, that makes sense? Mm -hmm. Like Absolutely. So it's uh, the love learning, love obedience. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll just stop. I could go, I could keep going with these things, but that, that kind of summarizes things. I'll, I'll stop there. Yeah. I think the pastor's job is being a, a difficult one in that it seems like what you have to do is contrary to the ideas. You know, you have to be humble, yet you have to speak the word author authoritatively. Right. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. Right. And and leadership in itself is is hard to do uh -huh. humbly because you want to be a strong leader. But so there's a lot of different things that work against each other. It's a yeah. difficult position to be in. Right, right. You're preaching to the choir. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, and, and I would and I would even go so far as to say the leadership model that you have as a pastor. And honestly, we need to not just say, pastors, you do this, the rest of the world does something else. Uh -huh. We all, in, in some, we all follow the same Lord, right? Our pastors follow the same Jesus that we're, we're following. That's, that's the idea, right? Uh, then when you are leading, you are leading sacrificially because that's what Jesus has done for us. Mm -hmm. And that means that we are learning that from our pastors. We're seeing our pastors demonstrating that we in turn, then here's what you're saying. You know, you teach the word of God, but then you obey it. Yeah. Right. We need to be loving sacrificially as well. And, and that is, that's a, that's a huge, huge responsibility. And I think that's the reason why, um, 
Christians need to be supporting our pastors, need to be not just saying good job, good sermon and, you know, on, on the shoulder, but to be praying mm. for our leadership, for, right. for, you know, actually engaging and saying, listen, um, how are you doing? How is your family doing? Uh, how can I pray for you? Because we need to understand that then what we're doing is we're sacrificing as well because we love our pastors. So that's, um, that is so important that we understand that model that Jesus has for us. Now, there's some complaints that people have to pastors. And I, I know that you are not going to say, these are the biggest complaints I get. And I just want to tell you what they are. I know you're not going to do that. So let me just share a few that other pastors have said. And sure. one of them is uh, someone will say, the pastor isn't meeting my needs. Okay. Now, as Christians, again, we're going back to believers here. Christians don't have the luxury of really griping about our pastors, right? Mm -hmm. Here's one of them. You're not meeting my needs, pastor. What What is the biblical way of maybe expressing this or to reflect upon this? Or what's the what's the heart issue behind this particular complaint? Yeah, I'd say if, if you have that type of, of thing where there's an unmet expectation or they, they didn't come through in the way I wanted, I'd say do it slow, slowly, prayerfully, carefully, and kindly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so often that's, that's not the way it comes. Mm -hmm. But if it would come slowly, prayerfully, carefully, and kindly, that's going to be much better received. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to engage in, in back and forth hu humility and conversation uh, when it just is a boil over. Right. There's, and so, you know, as leaders or a pastor, I, I don't want people stewing on things and, and then like just praying to get over it and they're not, and it just keeps growing and growing and festering and festering. Like, again, it's, it's a culture of the, the people know I can, I can go to him. Mm. I can, I can talk through these things. I can bring up that idea. I, I, can, I think that's key too. I think a closeness with the pastor yeah. will eliminate a lot of these problems. If, if you know them personally. Yeah. And that starts with a, with a pastor. If, mm. if a pastor and elders create a relational, uh, relational culture where they're not just in their office, but they're out with the people. If they're really engaging with people on Sundays or other times, and there's, there's an openness, there's a visibility, uh, for for that pastor, and so it kind of there's it goes both ways uh, with mm -hmm. that, and sometimes we get that wrong. Sometimes the people get that wrong. Right. Uh, we're always going to be wrong at at different points. But you know, if you if you have that thing where my needs aren't being met, man, I, I I'd say just 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 bring that. You know, do it do it humbly mm -hmm. and do it kindly. You know, not just the boil over and. Here I'm spewing all over you now. Yeah. Like if if we're if I'm off or we're off, and because then if you're able to share it, uh, that's better than the suing. Because either a pastor is going to be able to say, oh, "This is maybe where you're off. Maybe you know, I, I, here's my situation. Here's what I've been going through. Here's what and uh, why maybe it didn't happen on your timetable." There, there there has to be that conversation. There there can't be just the the quick assumptions and, and, and quick things of here's why you're wrong. And that's not just pastor people relationship. That's just relationship one-on-one. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the togetherness of I'm not better than anybody. And, and so, I mean, that's, I, I think so often just about that, just going back to that, just that whole idea and concept of this isn't just my show my vision and if you don't like it and you have complaints or you have any level of criticism then you can just go yep. like and that's that's not that's not me that i don't think that's biblical mm -hmm. I, I, there has to be clothe yourselves with humility all of you toward one another first mm -hmm. peter 5 says right in the context of talking to elders clothe yourself elders with humility towards one another see that helps the people uh, be able to then have a relationship where they can, they know, they can, they can bring things, they can talk, they can question, they can doubt, they can get answers, they can, that's, that's fine. Like, and, and that's, you know, and, and that's, we need that in our churches. Right. <laughs> we need, we, and so many pastors and leaders are so quick to just, to just say, how dare you, how dare you question anything? How dare you even go there? How dare you, like, we, I, 
if that's the way you're going to be, then I don't need you. And it's just so much pride and arrogance that I, I guard myself from. I fall into that too, but it has to be guarded. Clothe mm -hmm. yourself with humility. Mm -hmm. Well, and we need to also understand what if, <laughs> are our expectations off, like off? Like maybe we are expecting our pastors to do something, which really the pastors are never meant to do that. Like that's actually whatever that issue is, might be something you're responsible for. Yeah. So again, we need to instead, I like the humility part and I like the love and I like the idea that we need to get to know our leadership and our pastors too, because they're human beings, right? We're all humans. This isn't a contract, right? This isn't where, oh, um, I have a job. You're my boss. It's not that kind of relationship. This is a family relationship. So have your family over for dinner. Let's get to know the pastor. Let's get to know our leadership's family. Let's get to mm. understand who their kids are. Let's let's be a family, right? Yeah. First, um, and you might find out that maybe your your expectations are off. Maybe your expectations are right on, and the pastor just needs a little encouragement. But we don't know. But let's have a conversation first. Also. Um, here's another one that's always fun is, um, I'm not being spiritually fed. I'm not being spiritually fed. And we definitely want Bible teaching in our churches, right? Um, we, we love to hear the word of God, but you are also friend Christian. I'm talking to you now. You are also responsible to feed yourself, mm -hmm. right? Now, how can you feed yourself? Let's talk about other ways. I mean, Sundays aren't enough. I'm just going to put that out there. If you are only going to church on Sunday and getting fed one time a week, you're going to starve. <laughs> okay. So let's get off that. What are ways that you could, as, as what are ways pastor that you encourage other people to feed themselves? Yeah. Read the Bible. Okay. Yeah. I, I know that sounds simplistic, but so often it's, it's jumped over in an, in an effort of well, what's, what, how do, how do I do it? What's your What's your process? What's the mm -hmm. what, what side things do I need? What you know? How much should I read? Do right? I have and a program? Just, do I yeah yeah, yeah. on mm -hmm. and on and on? Where it, those sometimes those people I'll, I'll just say, "Are you reading the Bible?" And they're like, "No, I'm trying to get help." What tell me? And I'm just like, "Just you need to start by just reading the Bible." Sure. Like and, and you know, and then follow the Lord in that. Like maybe you'll. You'll, you'll give it 10 minutes one day. Maybe you've got a half an hour to spare this other day. Maybe you, you need to have a, a love for, for learning, mm -hmm. like we mentioned earlier. Sure. And, and from that will come, uh, the, the Bible says that when you've been, been born again, you've been made a new creation in Christ, that you're given new desires. And you need to pray for God to give you the, the desires to hunger for his word. Now, there'll be little, there'll be things that, and this is where it gets different, uh, as people come to me with, hey, help me, what, what, how can I learn? How can I do it? Yes, it's make sure you have a heart and a love for the Word of God and just just read it. Like mm -hmm. meet, meet with God. Meet with God. Pray the, pray the Word of God. Go through the Word of God. God speaks to you. Uh, pray the Word of God back to Him. This is because it's relationship. And, and so there'll, there'll be different, different being able to equip people. I'll say it this way. Equipping people uh, to be able to Engage with the word of God is going to look different from person to person because some people they're they're thinkers. They want the deep things. They want the they they just crave the, the I want to go deeper. I want to get in. What can you help me? Okay, here's some study guides. Here's some study Bibles. Here's how you can do that. Here's how you can study the word of God. There all kinds of different things. Some people are are more simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that stresses them out. They don't want deep. They just but they want the word of God mm -hmm. and and. So maybe it's a mom that's saying, I don't know if I have time for the word of God. And saying, well, just, you know, maybe it's just even, even just a verse that yeah. you meditate on and dwell on for the course of the day. You wake up and read that verse or you're memorizing that verse and it's just on your mind throughout the, and you're in relationship with God. And, and so it's not the amount or how much you read or, but, but it's a, it's a love for the word of God. And in a, in a, in a really the, the intake, I love Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. your words were found and I did eat them and they became to me the joy and delight of my heart. Mm -hmm. We want that for people. We want the word of God to be a joy and a delight to their heart, mm -hmm. that they would crave it, that they would long for it, that out of the new desires that God has given to them, it would, it would be something that they'd say, that's, that's what I need. And that's, you know, we pray that for, for people mm -hmm. and as leaders, as a constant prayer, that they would love the word of God, that they'd have that intake. So I don't even know if I answered your question no, specifically. I think, it's good. I, I think that gives us a lot of help too. I think the obvious, 
radio. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we have key radio here. What do we do? Oh, we have a lot of programming here that just teaches God's word. Yeah. And you can bring that with you. I mean, we have that app that you can just take it with yeah. you. Uh, and there's so many other things. Like there's great podcasts out there. Uh, you have the audio Bible. You can listen to it on your way to work or wherever, but incorporating that. But actually feeding Throughout the week, that's your responsibility, Christian. Yeah. We're going to say that, okay? This is not the pastor's responsibility. Yes, he needs to be a teacher. Yes, he yeah. needs to challenge us. Yes, he needs to do those things because that's that's his, that's what he does, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what he's called to do. But but Christian, you're called to to thirst for knowledge. Yeah. Uh, right. You're you're called to um, thirst for a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's on us. So yeah. that's an important that's an important thing yeah, both, for us. Both those things are good. I'll, I'll be quick with this because I yeah. don't want to move to the next, but. That that mindset of if if a person does not have any Bible intake at all and and just and then they're coming and saying I'm not being spiritually fed mm-hmm. like then you you have to turn that around and look at yourself and mm-hmm. say I need to take it in and, and but if someone is engaged in the Word of God learning the Word of God loving the Word of God studying the Word of God and then they're looking at leadership saying I don't feel like I'm being spiritually fed. You know, maybe there could be that type of a person or that type of a church mm-hmm. to be able to say, you know what, that there could be something wrong with the, with. And, and so again, the, the humility at all in the conversations mm-hmm. and you know, maybe even going to a pastor or leaders and saying, here's my concerns. Yep. I could be right. I could be wrong. I just want some feedback. You might have a new a per- perspective that I don't have. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the humility that you can come with. Yeah. Oh, that's that. good too. Um, here's something interesting in, in, if you aren't thirsting for the the word of God, maybe this doesn't even bother you right now. You're like, yeah, whatever. Um, I would just ask you a question here, my friend. If you're not hungering for the word of God, do you know who the word of God is? Mm. Who is the word? In the beginning was the word, Jesus Christ. Okay, Jesus. Uh, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Are you hungering for a relationship with Jesus? And you've heard us say relationship a lot today. And I would encourage you, my friend, um, definitely go to a local church. Definitely find a Bible-believing church. But if you don't know the Lord Jesus, that would be a great time to go to that local church and ask somebody Mm. who Jesus is. And the question, the age-old question, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be right with God? That really is fundamentally the, the biggest thing right now that I'm concerned for you. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what we're talking here is gospel. Okay. And a good Bible believing church will proclaim the gospel Mm. constantly. And this is, this is an important thing right now because the gospel is our foundation for everything, for understanding of who God is. It's our understanding and how to deal with the world around us. And, and, and so let's, let's spend a little bit of time here talking about that gospel. Yeah. You want to be in a place where the gospel is preached and where the gospel is lived, lived out. And, And so that's, and that's when you don't have that, then you don't have a Jesus centered church. Mm-hmm. And we're going back to what we we're saying before that Jesus is the head of the church. If Jesus is the head of the church, then his message, his good news that encapsulates the whole book we call the Bible, 66 books therein, right? Mm-hmm is the message of the gospel. I should expect that my church would be a place where the message is proclaimed and where the message is lived out. And that message is lived out through the, you know, the, it, the message is the person and works of Jesus Christ. And then as that is lived out, the works of Jesus Christ are lived out. You know, in my words, in my works, it's all an overflow of the gospel. So the gospel is always the heartbeat. It, it's always everything that you're coming back to. I, I should expect that the gospel would be clear I should expect that if I'm bringing friends and, and family or other people, they're going to hear the gospel. Yes, that, that message from the word of God is going to be for the church and for the health and the unity and the growth of the church, but that gospel is going to be there. And, and, and I should have that expectation that it's, it's clear that the elements of the gospel are there, that the sinfulness of man and the glory and the holiness of God and and the authority of the, the word of God and the, the victory of Jesus and his substitutionary atonement in our place, taking what we deserved. And so our sinfulness and God's holiness and God's plan and God's, God's will and what he's done, his works for us, 
I just should have an expectation that that's always so clear, mm -hmm. that that's always the, 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 the center in that we we're, we're able to receive God, that we're able to understand the gospel, we're, uh, we're able to understand life, and, and that life isn't found in, in just intellectualism or knowledge or facts, but it is as we come to him. That's the language of the Bible over and over again. Not as we come to the Bible, but as we come to him, as we come to Jesus, receive Jesus, walk with Jesus, worship Jesus, that the Jesus centric church is going to have the authority of Jesus Christ in and through and around everything. And then when you have that, you have a dependence on the Holy Spirit. And, and that's the expectation that, that people should have. And then the dependence of the spirit, people should see a praying church mm -hmm. that should start again, the wheel going all the way back to the top with pastors and elders. And they pray They're, they They devoted themselves to the ministry of the word and to the ministry of prayer. Acts chapter six, as they do that, that can be a tiring job, mm -hmm. caring for people, the ministry of the word, leading, guiding a church in, in truthfulness, loving people, praying for people, caring for people that can be tiring. And so what happened in Acts 6, they, they were getting overwhelmed. There was more and more people and they were getting tired and they were starting getting into all kinds of different things that they had to deal with. And they were losing focus from the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer. And so God established deacons leadership, those that would be able to step in and help with the peripheral mm -hmm. uh, sort of uh, activities or life of a church and, and just more the, the physical aspects of life and ministry in church so that there would be, be order. But again, back to there's the gospel and then from that comes life, mm -hmm. relationship, love, and but that has to be the heartbeat of the church. Mm -hmm. well, what is it, and we only have a few minutes left, what do pastors need from their congregation? <laughs> what do pastors I know, That's a good thing to know, because <laughs> if we really want to love our pastors and support our leadership, what do you need? Uh, I mean, a, a loving church is going to practice service. Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to serve. They're going to give. They're going to participate. They're going to be there. They're going to pray. They're going to... It's just, we, we need people to, to love people. <laughs> we need <laughs> people to care. We need people to, to love us we need, and to forgive us and to be kind toward us. Like, we're... As a pastor or leaders, I'm I'm not perfect. I, I need grace. I need mercy. <laughs> I need forget I need what God has, has given me. I you know, and, and there's a place to, to be able to say they're you know, they 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 have to exemplify it more and they're in a higher standard and yes, absolutely. I, mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. But you now we, we need we need that from people. We we need people saying, What can I do? How can I help? How can we serve? We we need people who are gonna say, you know what? This, I belong here. This is my church family. This mm -hmm. is, I'm going to be there. I'm going to participate. I'm going, I'm going to make a commitment. Like this is my home. You can expect me there on Sunday. Maybe I'll be taking a trip. Maybe I'll be, away. but, but there's, we, we long, if, if you have that within a church with people that just have a love for God, a love for God's word and a love for God's people, um, that's going to exemplify itself in a lot of different ways. But, you know, practicing evangelism, practicing fellowship, practicing attendance, um, the practicing generosity and giving like in all of this, there's a big list that you'd have mm -hmm. in the Bible, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, but just, just be a good, humble, loving church member <laughs> <laughs> that's kind and caring and generous and love people. Don't just have expectations of the pastor loving people. You go get to know people, love people, care for people, pray as you go. Like, God, you have someone here today for me that the pastor maybe isn't going to talk to, but you have me for them, not the pastor. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, maybe down the road, the pastor will be get into that person's life in ways that they never could have because I'm going to develop a relationship with them. They're going to stick around. And because, uh, because I showed love because I cared. And so that that's the loving culture that, that God has. Mm -hmm. That's what's your perspective on, on, on that? How to, I know you asked, what does a pastor want, but mm -hmm. just give me a little bit what, from what you guys are thinking. The... Oh, wow. Well, you know, I think just first off to make sure that we realize the pastor's a human yeah. and pastor has a family and pastor is, is a, it's definitely leading, but um, we are the flock. And actually we are 
also supposed to be lights. Yeah. <laughs> We're supposed to reach out. The, the Great Commission, loving one another, um, loving right. people, loving God, that, that's all on us too. The Great Commission belongs to everyone. Yes, it just, does. Right. So we need to make sure that we are part of the family and, and, and not just saying, right. oh, that's a pastor's, um, I, 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 oh, the pastor's job. Oh, I don't like that one. I don't <laughs> like that at all because I think we all have responsibility. I think it's interesting when we were kids. Remember this, here's the church, Here's the steeple, right. open the door, and here is all the people. And that's wrong-headed thinking because actually we are the church, okay? What we were, and we've really been conditioning ourselves, at, starting from yeah. the little kids, to say, oh, the people are inside the church. No, the people are the church. My friend, Christian, Amen. today, you are the church. And you have a, a great responsibility to love one another as Christ has loved us, that Amen. includes our pastors, that includes our leadership, that includes the, the person who's sitting next to us, and that includes our neighbors and friends and right. families. So we're challenged today. We don't get to complain. We, we get to be the hands and feet of Jesus. One more thing. Pastors need their people to be okay with long sermons. <laughs> oh, boy. Mike, you're going to have to work on Keep that Keep it to 30 right? minutes. <laughs> Fellowship Bible Church. We meet at 1030 a.m. every single Sunday, 375 North State Street in Linden. Would love to have anyone out there listening come and, and just check us out, see what we're all about. Okay. And you're preaching on? We're going through the book of First Peter. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you so much for leading us through this particular conversation. My friend, thank you for spending time with us today. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. This has been Mike and Heather in the Morning, a production of Key Radio, located in beautiful Provo, Utah. For more information about the program and the ministries of Key Radio, check out our website, keyradio.org. On behalf of Mike, Heather, and the entire Key Radio staff, have a blessed and glorious day.